What's up everyone, my name is Ron from Comics and Stuff and for this episode, we are going over the G.I. Joe Classified series Mutt and Junkyard 2-pack, which is a 2-pack that I've been wanting because of Junkyard right there. Now, he's not Mutt, alright, he's a purebred Rottweiler, I often confuse it with Mutt, so yeah. Anyway, I was excited for him because he'll be a nice addition to my collection of, you know, action figures that involve animals, and he does look good in that clear window box showing both him and Mutt right there. All their accessories and all of that beautiful artwork right there on the right. Hasbro logo right there, G.I. Joe Classified Series Mutt and Junkyard. Warning up there. When we go to the top, there's the number 113 and the G.I. Joe Star. When we go to the right hand side, there's that nice artwork. This time done in a blue silhouette, 113 G.I. Joe Classified Series and the star up there. When we go to the left hand side, 113 G.I. Joe Classified Series and that beautiful artwork to the bottom barcode legalities to the back you know same stuff as bro logo now this this picture though of both mutt and junkyard is beautiful guys i do like that rainforest you know background and all of that with a crocodile all sneaking up behind them so i like how this package looks 113 up there but now that we went through it let's open it up and check out the figures and here we got Mutt and Junkyard outside of the package and this two pack comes loaded with accessories. A bunch of cool ones and we're going to go through all of them. But first we're going to give each of these figures a quick measurement. Starting off with Mutt right here. Mutt stands at about six and a quarter inches so he does have some height to him. While Junkyard stands at about three inches. But to tell you the truth guys that's actually adjustable depending on how you put the legs and all that. Now lengthwise. From snout to tail, he stands at about four inches, as you guys can see. So I do like that. Now let's go into the accessories because there's a bunch of these hands <laughs> that I really don't know what they are. First, I'm going to go through the ones that I do know. Of course, you got a pointed finger hand right there. And you do got a fist. All of these hands do come with some paint right there on the, on the upper part. And it does also have some texture to it. So I do like how that looks. Now I'm going to go through the hands that I'm not quite sure what they are. There's this hand. Now I'm guessing this one's to command him to like, hey, come here, boy. <laughs> so I do think that's what this is for, but I'm not sure. If you guys do have an idea what these hands are for, let me know down in the comments. We also got this hand. Again, I'm not sure what it's for, but it does look like he could salute with it. So I'm not mad with it. The other two hands right here. There's one that looks like a capiche, you know. Again, I don't know what kind of command that is. And we got something that looks like a, I'm guessing like a padding hand to pat a uh, junkyard right here. But again, guys, I'm not entirely sure. Now, let's head into the weapons first. We got this knife. Does got some silver paint on the blade. Got a nice little handle in order for him to grip it. It is what it is. It does go inside the sheath right there. We also got a handgun. Got a little bit of paint. A bit of sculpt. I do like how that came out. And of course, you could put it on his holster. We're not going to do that right now. Now, we also got... Again, guys, you know, I'm not familiar too much with weapons and all that. So, I'm just going to say this is a rifle. <laughs> but it does got some paint and all of that. Looks rather nice. The ammo is able to come off. So, be aware of that. You don't want to lose it or anything. Got some sculpt. Got a scope. Yeah. Looks good. I don't mind it at all. I do like the weapons. And of course, we also have a baton. At least that's what I'm thinking this is called. Correct me if I'm wrong. Could be a nice stick. I don't know. <laughs> but it got some sculpt, at least where the handles are at. No paint. But it does the job of convincing you it is a baton. Now, I want to go through this helmet because I actually like how this came out. It does have some texture, as you guys could tell, but it has a wash in order to dirty it up. A nice rust color. 
So it looks weathered. It looks worn. I think that's the look they were going for and they pretty much nailed it. So I am happy with that. Again, guys, I don't know if it's a wash and I don't know if it's dry brushing, but it does give it a good effect. Now, if you want something to go on top of that helmet, there are some goggles. There's this one right here and this one right here. It does miss the mark, the paint by a little bit. But it's not too noticeable once it is on the helmet. So it is a nice golden color. So I do like that. It got some give. It got some, you know, it's able to fit the helmet nice. Now we also got a face mask for Mutt right there. And it does have some green paint. Some red right there. It does got some sculpt. And it does fit him lovely, actually. Of course, you got to pop off the head in order for it to be put on. But yeah, it works. Now, finally, let's go to Junkyard's alternate head, which is a growling head. I like that. The paint around his lips is good. The gums showing and the teeth just snarling is good. The eyes are painted nicely. He does got his nostrils like a wet look to it. So I do like that. There is sculpt to imitate fur. Yeah. And if you want to see how his other head looks like, you know, let's just go into Junkyard. I mean, <laughs> yeah, let's just go into Junkyard right now. I keep forgetting that he's not Mutt, but this is his more neutral face. Tongue all out like, you know, wants to play and everything. I do like it. He does have fur sculpted on him. This harness that he got does got paint, like an olive green color mixed with that lighter green color. So I do like that. As for his collar, yeah. All the studs on it are painted with a silver. The face itself, just like the snarly face, got some nice paint. The eyes look good. The ears all flopped down look rather nice. Yeah, I'm pleasantly happy with this with this Rottweiler right here. Of course, this is unremovable, which is, you know, you're going to have to cut it. Like I tried pulling it out and I almost got it out. I'm thinking with a little heat it could, but yeah, there is no, you know, buckle or anything in order for it to be taken off. But there is sculpt in there. It's not like it's bare or something like that. If you do want to take it off and just have a regular, you know, uh, non-clothed Rottweiler, it's done. It could be done, guys, basically is what I'm getting at. Now, let's just do for articulation because the scope does look good. Hold on. Let's just keep going with the scope. What I don't like is that the paws are not painted. You know, Timber had his paws painted, so they missed the mark on that. But other than that, I am pleasantly happy with him. You're a good boy. <laughs> You're a good boy. Anyway, he does have what I'm thinking is a, yeah, it's a double ball peg in there, guys. So that affords him to look up this way. You know, we're not going to use this joint because there is another ball right there. At least I think it's a ball. No, there's a hinge and a ball, I'm guessing, because it does afford him tilt down there, too. So there's a hinge and a ball down there and a double ball peg up here. So sideways, yeah, you're looking sideways. <laughs> there is a lot of tilt. Of course, you're going to get rotation. Looking up with both joints gives him great mobility. Looking down. There we go. That's about the farthest it could go. And you guys already saw the tilt. So I do like that. Now for his legs. It does have a hinge right there, but there is some mobility, so I'm not entirely sure. Oh, it's a ball. So yeah, there's a ball down there, so it does afford you up and down. I mean, forward and back does give you some nice little open movement in order for him to be more of an attacking stance. And the first joint does got a hinge. And you do get swivel. So that's cool. The second joint right here has a hinge. 
So that works just fine, no swivel. The pause does got a hinge and you do get pivot. I'm only gonna go through two legs, basically the front and the back guys. Same situation with the back legs, there is a ball, I'm guessing because yeah, you could spread it, you could put it closer, and of course back and forth. This joint also got a hinge, it's a little stuck. All right, I'll loosen that up later, but yeah, I'll loosen that up later. Yeah, I'll loosen it up later. But anyway, it got a hinge, and you do get swivel there. There is a hinge on that second joint, hinge on the pause again, as well as pivot. So, you're a good boy. <laughs> I like that figure a lot. And again, guys, the paint is minimalist. At least, you know, I like that gradiency from the brown to the black. It does imitate the fur. It does look good. I am happy with Junkyard right here. But let's go into Mutt. Now, for Mutt, there is no dry brushing. There is no, uh, there is no wash, but the paint that is applied, I think is applied pretty well. That back part, I don't know what that is. I tried reading it earlier. I even took a picture, zoomed in. I couldn't read it. So I'm just going to call it bear spray. <laughs> the paint that he does got though, like the ones on his knees, is painted nicely. There is paint right there on his boots. Texture all around the pants. Wrinkles. Wrinkles on the boots. His belt is painted in there. Now, I don't know how I feel about this hair, though. Like, I could have dealt without, without it, basically. I do not like how that looks much. For his head, though, Dave, this is a good head sculpt. I mean, check it out. The scars on his cheek look good. The bags on his eyes look good. There's frown, you know, there's wrinkles on his brow right there. Nasal labial folds, he got a nice grimace to him. The teeth are painted rather nicely. He got a five o'clock shadow. I am happy with this head sculpt. The hair though, it's a bit plain for me, but it's understandable because you're gonna put on the helmet so it would need to be a bit bland in order for the helmet to fit best. With the helmet, I love it. <laughs> Without it, eh. But I do love that face, man. All right, for the rest of the figure though, the paint, like I said, is very minimal. But on the vest right here, he does got some red right there. This metal does got some paint and some gold right there on the star. So that's a real nice attention to detail. Black right here on the zipper. The bullets, I'm guessing, also got some gold on it. Yeah, as for the holster, there is also some black paint and some texture to go along with it. Yeah. By the way, guys, these are separate pieces on both arms. So there is hair underneath this gauntlet. As you guys can see, I'm not going to pop it off now, but there is hair down there. I do like it. Again, there's some black right there. Minimal paint. But what they did with the paint, you can't really be mad at. Now for articulation though, he comes in a double ball peg up there. But there is also a ball joint right under the neck. So both of them in conjunction does give you pretty good tilt. You know, of course, you're going to get your rotation on that top joint. Both of them looking up. It could have done more, you know, it could have done more. <laughs> down though which is most important because of course he's going to be looking down at junkyard right there so down it looks good i'm not mad with that rotation till you saw that now for the shoulders mm, let's see a bit above t-pose so that is good full 360 there is a bicep cut and there's the butterfly joints Semi-butterfly joints that we already know from G.I. Joe Classified series that give you a little bit back and a tiny bit forward. Double-jointed, pinless elbows. 
that without the gauntlet, with the gauntlet gets you about that much range. But like I said, guys, it's a separate piece. So, you know, I, I don't doubt. In fact, let's try this hand. Yeah, a bit more range. Exactly. So, I'll take it. Now for his uh, torso. He does come with an ab crunch. But because of that vest, it gives you one click forward, I'm guessing. So it gets you that much range without using the bottom joint. And I'm thinking, yeah, one click back. And that's not bad. That's not bad range at all. Now, using both of them, all right, one click. Yeah, that's pretty good. Using both of them. Let's see. There we go. Not bad at all. Now, for that bottom joint, of course, you're going to get a tiny bit of tilt. Not really much, but you will get your rotation from there. So that's good. Now, he does have drop down hips. And when you drop it down, kick forward. Mm, that's not bad. That's pretty much straight. A little bit back and split. He does it better than Spider-Man, which is ridiculous. <laughs> so splits is not a problem at all. There is a thigh cut that works just fine. Double jointed. Pinless knees. Hold up a second, guys. This is like a little bit. You know what? Let's just go with this one. I'm going to have to heat up this figure later on because, yeah. All right. Managed to get it. Yeah. Good range. Good range indeed. So I do like that. And now he does have a boot cut that's cleverly hidden at the boot like it should be. So I like that. Ankles go up like this. Back like that. And you do get pivot. Now that we went through junkyard. Junkyard. <laughs> and ma, why do I keep mixing them up? Anyway, now that we went through them. Let's go to some comparisons with other G.I. Joes as well as, you know, Cobra action figures. And our first comparison will be with some G.I. Joes. Right there, I have a small body type in Lady J and a large body type in Sergeant Slaughter. You know, it gives you a good sense of why his scale really is and everything. And his scale's lovely. Over here, Junkyard also scales lovely with both Lady J and Sergeant Slaughter. So if you want to take pics with Sergeant Slaughter pointing out, like, go get him, boy, or something like that. It totally works. And for this comparison, of course, we're going to put him next to some Cobra action figures with the Red Ninja right there on the left next to him, Supreme Cobra Commander. And all the way to the right right there is the Cobra Arctic Bat. Just like the Joes, I think it looks good. Not a problem with it at all. You know, the Cobra Arctic Bat, especially being all towering over him. I like the look. Let's head into the final comparison. And our final comparison will have to be with Snake Eyes and Timber. Now, you know, Snake Eyes, he scales well. It's not a problem. The real comparison that I wanted to get into was with Timber. Of course, Timber is taller than him. No matter what poses you kind of do with them and all that. If you do the same exact pose, Timber will always be taller. And that makes sense because he is a wolf. But the engineering is basically the same, guys. You do get that, you know, ball joint where the waist is at. Same with Timber, although his is a little higher up. So... Other than that, the hinges and all that, the swivels, is basically the same exact kind of posability. And I like that. They're doing a great thing with these animals. So in conclusion, I thoroughly enjoyed this two-pack. Both Mutt and Junkyard are great figures. They got good sculpt. They got good articulation. They got a good paint job. The one little gripe that I do have is there's no dry brush or wash in order to help bring some of the details out. But as is, I still had a ton of fun taking pics with them and would highly recommend it to anyone. If you guys are interested in it, I will leave a link in the descriptions. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like, comment, subscribe, because all of that stuff helps out the channel. My name is Ron from Comics and Stuff, and I'll check you guys on the next episode. Peace.